Thank you for clicking on my video. Uh, real quick, before we get to the topic at hand, I just want to take a minute to say thank you to everybody who's interacted with my content over these last six months. Whether you've liked my videos, you've commented on my videos, you've subscribed to my channel, or you've even watched any of my videos, I truly am appreciative of what you've done for me. I've only had this channel for about six months. I started it in February of 2024. At the time of this recording, this is July of 2024, so just about six months. And I just passed a thousand subscribers a few days ago. And that is completely uh, crazy to me that I would have a thousand people out there that would want to subscribe to my channel. Uh, when I started this channel, I thought it would just be a fun little side project for my home theater. So I could sit here, make a couple videos, talk about my home theater, something I really enjoy in my life. And maybe I would get a few people to watch the video. Maybe I'd have a couple people who'd subscribe. And then within six months or maybe a year, that itch would have been scratched to try this YouTube thing. And I would have just kind of gotten done with it and pushed it off to the side and just gone back to doing my day-to-day -day sort of stuff and not really worried about it and could have said, hey, at least I did this and it was interesting for what it was. But the level of support that I've gotten in this home theater community uh, here on YouTube has truly been humbling. Uh, like I said, to have a thousand subscribers, I never thought this channel would get to a thousand subscribers, maybe ever in the entire lifetime of me doing content on YouTube, I, I didn't think I would ever get anywhere near uh, this kind of support and this kind of uh, level of subscribers. So to have what I have now is just truly humbling and, and almost crazy and, and mind-boggling to me that I would even have this level of support. Uh, but with that being said, I, I again just want to say thank you to everybody. Uh, regardless of if you've subscribed or not, if you've just interacted with my content and with me here on YouTube in any way, I truly do appreciate it. And it really shows that there is a market here on YouTube in the home theater kind of niche for a budget-friendly and secondhand use kind of friendly mindset. And so that's really pushing me forward. And I really just want to say I'm going to keep making content. Uh, I'm really dedicated to try and improve the quality of my videos, you know, with every video I make and really try and make, you know, quality content that you guys out there that are watching these videos really want to see and that you find interesting and entertaining, uh, you know, to an extent for as entertaining as I am, I guess. Uh, so again, I just want to say thanks to everyone and I don't want to dwell on this, but I, I really am humbled and, and this really is a shock and a surprise to me. I, I never thought this would happen. So, all right, with all that mushy stuff out of the way, I just want to say thanks again. Here's to another thousand subscribers. Don't know if it'll happen in as quick a time as this first thousand. Honestly, that doesn't even matter to me to even be at a thousand is something I never would have dreamed of. So with that, all the mushy stuff aside, Let's get on to the real content in this video today, and thank you again, here's to a thousand more. Thank you for clicking on the video. Here today, I'm stepping away from the projector-related content. I feel like I've done a lot of that over my last couple videos. And wanted to focus on something a little bit different uh, that's not projector-related necessarily. And I'm gonna talk about my media wall, or my media rack, or media shelf, whatever you wanna call this. Uh, this is something that I touched on in one of my very first videos when I did a home theater tour here in my home theater and talked about all the different aspects of everything I had here at the time. Uh, and one of those things I touched on was this media wall. So to start out with, I've been doing a lot of whatnot auctions, uh, which should be linked in the description here below and also uh, in my channel. Uh, if you're not familiar, whatnot is like an auction site uh, where you do live streams and auction off different stuff. Uh, I've been selling a lot of like VHS tapes and DVDs and stuff like that. So feel free to join me. It's under the same name, Secondhand Home Theater. That's a cheap plug. Anyways, I've been doing a lot of auctions on there. And typically the way I have my camera set up, this media wall is in the background. And I've had a lot of people comment and just want to talk to me about this media wall uh, through my auction 
like streams. And I chit chat with them a little bit, but I've tried to lead them to my channel here because that's not really what what not is for. Uh, you're not supposed to just sit there and chat with people. You're actually supposed to run auctions. But I like to do that, you know, just talk with people who show up. So anyways, I wanted to do this video here today. This media wall was not originally what I had here when I first started my home theater. I actually had another one of uh, these shelves, which you can't really see here on camera, but these are the big metal industrial grade uh, racks. I have one here with all my like records and different stuff on, and I have another one with all my equipment on there. Well, I had had kind of another one of those that originally sat here in this sort of space. Uh, and then I also had a couple, which you may or may not be able to see off to the side down here, just like standard DVD media rack, like the short ones with like the four or five shelves on it. Uh, and that's what I had and that's what I used with my media collection. So in searching around trying to find a more uh, space saving way to store all my physical media, it led me to a couple posts on like AVS forums, a few videos on YouTube, a couple like instructables uh, and things online about building a media shelf that goes directly onto your wall, which is what I did here. I don't have any footage of actually building this. This was actually created about a year ago. So it was well before I ever decided I was gonna do anything on YouTube. If I would have had the foresight or would have thought about it, then maybe I would have recorded me and my wife actually putting this together. Anyways, so what I basically did is I Googled uh, the Instructables and these different things to see how to do this. And more or less, all this is, is uh, two by fours here on the side to make the frame. And you buy two of them and you cut them to length, depending how tall your ceilings are. So these are just about seven feet tall up here. They go all the way down to the floor. And then for these middle dividing shelves that go in here, you basically take like a one by two. I think it's a one by two or maybe a one by one. I have to look that up. It'll pop up here on the screen. I'll figure out what it is in a second. Uh, but you take the smaller pieces of wood and you can buy shorter pieces depending what width you need. Or you can buy a bigger piece and cut it up into smaller pieces, which is what I did. Uh, but you just measure out your width and then cut out the pieces. And all you have to do when you put them on here is I just measured out the length of a DVD case, because that's a little bit taller than a Blu-ray case. And then added just like half an inch of space above it and just mark them out on each piece of wood. And then you take some wood screws and just put them on there with a level, make sure they're level, screw them into the wood, and there you go. And you have a perfect shelf that is just enough space to get your media on there. The width of these cases, or the depth, I should say, of these cases, is just enough that when you sit it in here, it leans perfectly against the wall. So it gives you just enough space to grab the disc out while still securing against the wall. So there's no back piece of wood here. It's just pressed up against the wall and just sitting against the wall is a kind of like back board for these. And it works out really well. It's actually just kind of interesting how the dimensions work in that aspect that you don't have to do anything extra there. Now, the way I secured these to the wall was fairly simple. I just took a couple like L brackets, small ones, and just screwed them into the wall with wall anchors. Uh, and there may have been a stud on, I think, I think there's a stud right here. Just screwed them in to the two by four, screwed them into the wall and just anchored them in and just did them about a third of the way down on each, each side. And then just did it on this side as well. So that's secure into the wall. And then you have your middle shelves here. Now I will say, depending how big of a shelf you're wanting to build, mine is relatively a moderate in size for this space. I really wanted to keep it confined right here. So this is only, like I said, about seven, seven feet tall. And I don't know, this is probably, I think it's like four feet wide. And this is somewhat small. If you were wanting to do, say, like my entire wall that's here, you would probably want to break these up and add more studs in between or should I say like vertical columns in between and either just butt them up and put smaller pieces across or if you have one big piece you want to make sure you 
secure it along the way. Uh, because when you get kind of wider than this, depending how many discs you have sitting on here and what type of media you're using, you know, as the DVDs, Blu-rays, video games, whatever, it's going to start to sag and you have a chance of actually breaking the wood. So you want to keep it to like three, four feet in width until you put in another two by four column in there just to make sure it stays secure, make sure it doesn't sag or break. And this works for the regular DVDs, regular Blu-rays or 4K discs, you know, stuff like that. This will also work for VHS tapes. It'll work for CDs. It'll work for video games uh, of various eras. So these are highly universal in the type of media it can seat. Uh, it won't really work for like LPs though. Um, those are a little bit too big. They're gonna hang out too far. So you would have to get a much thicker piece of wood for your columns in order to do something like that. And you would probably want a thicker shelf kind of going across like a two by four or something to support the weight of LPs because they are so heavy. But if you're just sticking with DVDs, Blu-rays or video games, you know, stuff like that, these kind of pieces of wood and what you'll see in a lot of the videos and the instructions and stuff online are gonna work for this. Now, once everything got built before I put all my media up here, my wife and I, we painted it matte black. Uh, same color as the wall. It's actually the exact same paint, uh, I believe. You probably wouldn't even notice that it was here. It just kind of sinks into the wall and kind of disappears. Now, one thing I've also mentioned in some of my other videos, I'm not a huge cover art person or steelbook person, even though I do have some steelbooks up here. I'm just more about the actual content on the disc, whether it's the film or the special features and all that sort of stuff. And so some people have commented in other videos why my cases look weird. And that's because they're slim cases. And I wanted to maximize form over function. And I wanted to maximize how much space I could actually theoretically utilize here. So in order to get the most amount of movies on the shelves, I pretty much transferred everything I could over to a slim case. So I have regular slim cases like these. These are just uh, single movie slim cases. And I also have right here, double slim cases that have two discs. So if I have a disc and a bonus disc or a disc and like this one, this has the regular movie for Logan and the black and white version. I can just sit them both in here and these are just slightly thicker than a standard uh, Blu-ray slim case or DVD slim case, but they're still actually quite a bit thinner than a standardized Blu-ray case. Now that isn't to say I'm not using regular Blu-ray cases uh, because certain movies, for example, we'll grab this one down, Apocalypse Now. If it comes in a specialty case or has a specialty slip cover and all that on here, I still keep it in the Blu-ray case. Uh, so like I have that one here, or in the case of you can probably see like this Fly collection, or you know my favorite film series of all time, uh, Alien. With this, the anthology collection, this is in a specialty case. Uh, I just keep it in this case. I'm not gonna get rid of stuff like this uh, and put them in smaller, slim cases. I'm gonna keep them in their specialty cases. Uh, and that goes for a lot of stuff. Jurassic Park, Lethal Weapon, uh, this Leprechaun that has a seven disc set, the Lord of the Rings Blu-ray Collector's Edition, uh, my Chucky collection, Star Trek, all that stuff is in specialty cases. That also goes for my DVDs that are here. So a lot of people also mentioned the organization that I have here on my wall. And I did it basically by format, uh, with one exception, which is my steel books, but it's basically format and then alphabetized within the format. So I start off the very top section up here is steel books. Then I go to my 4k discs. Then I go to Blu-ray and then I go to DVD. And then down at the very bottom, I have snapper cases and HD DVD. And within each one of these formats, I've alphabetized them. And I've made these little dividers. And a lot of people have mentioned about that on my whatnot streams and mentioned about it in a couple videos. The way I made these, I actually made them twice, essentially. 
I went to the post office and just got a bunch of the priority uh, flat rate boxes that they offer. They're free. You can pick them up at your local post office. I took those, I made a template, and then I cut out my dividers. So at first I started off with ones like these. And these were actually too small. I cut them out and then I basically made them the size of an index card. And that's what's on here. The problem is those are really not tall enough or long enough to fit in here. So when you push them all the way to the wall, they kind of get lost and they don't stick out. And if you pull them out more to stick out, they fall out. So that's kind of what I did initially. So to combat that, I redid them and I measured out how far in they would have to stick out from the wall and then just did the same thing again, got those flat rate boxes and just added the length on there and then put these index cards, which I got from the dollar store. This was all from the dollar store and then the post office. And then I got these stickers here that are the letters again from the dollar store and just put them on here and then just ran some tape around to keep it all together. And that's how I made my dividers and just kind of stuck them on here. And these are other kind of random ones. I changed the lettering up a little bit. I like the white with the black outline, kind of sticks out a little more. But that's how I made my dividers. And the way I did it for the actual format was kind of a similar thing. I printed these off just on the printer, found just the regular logo for like Blu-ray, DVD, uh, 4K disc, uh, printed them out and then stuck them on to these and then just taped it and then stuck them up there. Now, all in total, the wood itself, at the time I bought this, with the like wood screws and a few little brackets and all that stuff, was under $50 for the wood. And I know the hardware and lumber prices vary wildly nowadays with like inflation and all that, and depending where you live, but it was about 50 bucks for all that stuff. Uh, it only took about an hour or so to get everything uh, put up here. I did have Home Depot cut the wood for me. Uh, I had everything measured to length and just had the guys cut it for me there, which kind of cut down on the time. The actual little dividers it cost me nothing for the boxes. And then the actual index cards and stickers was probably like $6 give or take. Uh, with Dollar Tree nowadays, it's like $1.25 instead of a dollar. Uh, index cards, one or two packs of those, so that's like $2.50. Uh, and then two or three or four even of these stickers, because that's a weird thing. When you buy those stickers with letters, they don't have like two of each letter. Some have two letters on there and some only have one. So if you're doing like this where you need one on each side, it may not have it. So you've got to buy two or three or four sometimes of those to make enough for everything. Uh, but when you factor all that in there, plus, you know, the index cards, it was like six bucks, seven bucks, you know, after tax with everything. So all in, it was like under $60 for everything. And then just a little bit of, you know, time to put it all together. Uh, if you need to buy the paint, that would obviously be a little bit more, but we had leftover black paint from when we painted the walls in here. So I was able to just use that to paint the actual wood when we put it up on the wall. So anyways, yeah, this was hopefully an interesting little video about everything. With that, uh, again, I hope this was interesting and uh, I will say thank you, like I always do to everyone who's watched my content and liked and subscribed. I really do appreciate it. And uh, now that this video is done, I'm going to be going back to doing some more projector related content. So I will see you in the next video. Thank you.